Good morning. How are you guys doing? <clears throat> Sorry, I haven't talked much today. My family's out of town, so you guys are it. I am I'm kind of nervous to sew these, you guys, but um, I'm so excited to sew them that uh, the nervousness will go away. And I, I'm nervous because I'm doing so many mods. <laughs> so let's see. Um, I have my camera kind of canted this way because I tend to hold things over my lap sometimes. So tell me if that's just too far. You want more machine bed. Um, it's a really dark fabric. And now that I see it on there, so I'm going to lighten up the, the um, camera a little bit because I can brighten it up a tiny bit. So let me just know if you ever need it more. Let's see how that is. How are you guys doing? I feel like it's been forever, but it's only been since Saturday. <laughs> I, uh, skipping that Tuesday stream um, gives me a lot of extra time, and the time is really not extra. I have a lot to do. <clears throat> okay, so here is what I'm making. I'm making these Burnside bibs, and there's a lot of overall patterns out there. I haven't worn them since um, <laughs> I had my daughter, and I lived in maternity overalls because they were basically the only thing I was comfortable. And then I felt like it became completely socially unacceptable to wear overalls after that. <laughs> so I'm sure you know what I mean. And um, I'm really glad they're making comeback because they're really comfortable. And these are nice and feminine. I, I feel like I'm going against the pattern a lot by the mods I'm doing because I'm making them more overall than, than just these relaxed kind of um, bibs that they're calling them. And I'm doing it mainly because of the way I know things fit me. Um, I have a really narrow like rib cage, high waist area, and I'm busty and I have hips and so I'm pretty curvy. And I see these bibs looking really fantastic on a lot of people. And um, I see them most commonly on tall, slender folks. Um, so I feel like I haven't seen them on as many curvy bodies as so I can kind of get a gauge of what they're going to be like. Um, and that's, you know, that just happens, right? Like you, you just, not everybody hashtags them. So I am going to remove a lot of these gathered. This is actually, the one pictured here isn't the one I'm making. I'm making this one here that has a dart. I don't know if you can see that. It was really subtle. I had a, I had a time kind of trying to figure out the differences because there wasn't a description. Um, this one, the tie goes across the back, to the back and then threads through belt loops and then ties at the back. I am really klutzy, I'm not exagger exaggerating about that. And having ties is a little bit just not a great idea for me. So I am going to try and eliminate this whole back tie area. I'm getting rid of the belt loops. I'm gonna make the tie start at the back waist and then come to the front and then go through some D-rings and just knot it. Um, and then, um, these, the one I picked is this one, which has less fullness in the back and it has a, a dart there. These also don't have the back pocket. This does um, all about pockets everywhere, anytime, any place. I will probably make the cropped version, but I cut the full length just so I have some, I, um, some you know, options. I may add a bib pocket, but then I feel like I'm going really against the entire like aesthetic of this pattern. Because the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I'm getting rid of all this fullness back here, I have to compensate to be able to get it over my hips and stuff. And um, I probably don't honestly, but I am going to put some side button closures if I need to, um, like you know, like traditional overalls do. So has anybody made these here? I know there's only a few of you here, but if anybody has any tips. I had a double of a time trying to figure out what thread color to use and then I kind of realized there's there's not a ton of top stitching on this like overalls would be but there are like the pockets on the front are patch pockets as well as the ones on the back and um, I am known for kind of doing kind of colorful things obviously but I really want these to be versatile so I think I'm going to go with um, a, a dark gray instead so I think like it's a tiny bit of contrast. This is a black denim. I know you can't really tell, but it's a black denim. And I'm gonna attach this to one back pocket. I actually tried earlier and I realized I couldn't get away with the thread color that I wanted to do. Cause I wanted to just attach that and then switch to my gray thread. So I didn't have to switch threads too often here um, because I, I don't like doing that. So 
I'm just going to attach this and then I can get rid of, the, rid of this thread on my machine. This is also a good test to know that the fabric's not that forgiving. Like you, you can still see my holes. The denim is a little stretchy. Um, and I don't know if that's gonna be a good thing or a bad thing to be honest. Okay, so I'm gonna actually mark where um, I'm starting this so that I can get it symmetrical like that. That way I have like a target when I get to the other side, just like that. And I'm gonna put this on loosely because I have a feeling that this this uh, trim, I didn't, I've never pre-washed it. And I don't really want it to shrink too much and do something weird when um, I go to wash these, you know, when I'm wearing them. Get rid of my pin. Yeah, this thread color is a lot better. It looked, I used cream on the first pass and uh, it looked okay on the top, but when I tried to just kind of do a little bit of scalloping, it was really obvious. And I like, I, I kind of want to stitch right here, right here, but because that's the thickest part, but then I might get this kind of flipping up. So I'm kind of torn. I don't want to fall off the edge. So I'm kind of trying to decide which which one I will do. Hmm. I hope I like having this lace trim on there. I really like this color. I'm just going to wing this. Yeet! See, I already fell off. This is the problem when you sew live. You just kind of wing it. I just got to, you know? I don't even know how I'm going to do some of these mods because I've never sewn these before. So I don't really know what to expect with the pattern. So I fell off right there and right there. And I'm actually going to fix that because over time, they're going to bug me. So I'll just take it back right there and right there. I didn't have any uh, thread like on a <laughs> bobbin for this color. Um, but I'm actually using a bobbin as my, <laughs> as my thread up there on my thread thing. It's kind of funny. Get rid of that. Just looking for where I just pulled that out. So I can get rid of the thread now. Cause what can happen is if I leave this little like loop of thread right there, um, I could catch it when I put my finger in my back pocket and then rip it. Rip the stitching, because it'll just take out what, I'll, what the other thing I've done. So I just, I'm just trying to be clean. I cannot find this other one though. Oh, there, there we go, there we go, okay, okay. So anywho. Okay. That's better. All right. And now these will be ready and I can switch to my gray thread, so. See, I was using a bobbin. <laughs> do you ever do that? It's the closest thing I had, it was quick. I didn't want to, uh, you know, I didn't really need to have a matching uh, bobbin thread to sew that as long as I knew it was gonna pull to the top. And even if it did on that particular thing, um, I, I really didn't think it would show. There's just too much going on with the lace. So just in case you're new here, I use an industrial machine for everything, but I try and use it like a home machine so that anyone can do what I do. Um, I did decide to sew these burn sides utilizing my serger. Um, I know everybody doesn't have a serger and I have sewn a few things here um, with, at, without using my serger at all, just so that, you know, it can be useful to you. And I pre-surged, um, all the, all the areas I think I'm going to need. So I'm just going to hem this pocket right now. And I know I'm going to, I think I'm going to hem it from the top because, um, 
I really want the stitching to look the best. And my, my upper thread always looks better than my lower thread. I'm sure that's the same for you guys as well. And I feel like it's straight. It's a short distance. I can handle it. I can't use a um, double needle uh, top stitching needle. Have you seen, have you guys seen those? Let me see if I have one here. I was just given one to do one of my projects coming up. I feel like, I feel like I have one. Let's see. In my needle sharp box, uh, she gave me a double needle. Have you guys used one of those? They're really awesome. They work amazing um, on your home sewing machine. Uh, they won't on my industrial because if you'll notice, I have, um, let me show you. See under my, can you see that? Right there. <laughs> see right there, I have a little tiny hole. I don't have a big enough hole for the um, two needles to go through. So it would just break. So I can use this on my home machine, but I can't use it on my industrial. But if you want to do jeans top stitching, like the double needle style, or you want to um, do like that one's for knits, you can do that straddling technique over a seam that you see on your, your store-bought knits. You can do a fake cover stitch. Um, a little tricky with that like it it'll work it'll make it look like that but make sure you don't use it in areas of high stress that kind of hem if you're trying to mimic a cover stitch because uh you have only one you have a bobbin and that means it's not um going to have the stretch rather than like say if you were sewing on a cover stitch machine there's no bobbin it's a chain stitch that's why it's stretchy so that's the difference but it'll give you that look and maybe on like a sleeve hem or something. Um, well, some some sleeve hems actually need to stretch. All right. I feel like the I go straighter when I go fast. Scarier, but true. Ooh, this really stretches. This is really stretchy. <laughs> and I'm gonna do a second pass, but I'm gonna actually push this in there so it doesn't stretch out this time. I'm um, just gonna line up my presser foot. To that edge. I'm hopefully I can iron that out there. That was a super stretcher. I I uh, had a double of a time trying to figure out figure out the fabric I wanted to use for these, and um, I just decided like whatever I make is gonna be great, right? As long as there was enough drape, that's all that mattered. So now I'm going to do my opening and now I'm really nervous. I feel like this is going to get crazy stretchy. So I'm going to put a stay stitch in here. I almost want to surge it. I mean, I know surging is stretchier, but it would actually help stabilize this. I'm pushing this in there to kind of make sure it doesn't stretch. Um, I don't, I'm pretty sure there's not a stay stitch step on uh, the pattern, but there might be. I did read through the instructions, but I kind of skimmed. I just wanted to make sure I did it in the same order that they do, just in case you guys are following following along in the future if you do your own burn sides. Okay, so this one goes. This one goes on this one. My grain line looks kind of funny. That's what I was looking at. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> So this is a patch pocket, not a side seam or a hip pocket like we've been sewing lately. Again, I'm going to push this in there like kind of like this. So I'm making sure because I have a tendency to pull when I sew. I don't know about you guys, but um, I tend to be like a, I like things very taut and it gets me into trouble. And I clip the curve right up to the seam. And the reason we do this, don't ever skip this step. If you have a curve, especially an inverted curve like this, or well, any kind of curve, any kind of curve, you need to clip. And the reason why is um, if you were to measure along this cut edge here and then measure where this is gonna fold to, cause this is gonna fold to there. 
See, it has to spread out because where it's folding to, that spot right there, that's a longer distance and that's why you um, clip it. Um, now I'm gonna, um, I'm, ooh, yeah, I'm gonna understitch this. Yeah, I'm gonna understitch this. Denim is a little thicker, so I wanna make sure that it all goes to the inside. There's a little thread there. Where'd that guy come from? That was just a little, little cut thread. Okay, and now it'll fold beautifully to the inside. And you know, uh, press as you go. It would make things like this a little easier. I'm gonna use a couple of pins just to make sure that uh, it stays crisp on the fold right there because I'm not gonna iron right now. And this would be a great uh, opportunity to use uh, those gizmos that measure the distance, like long, wide distances for top stitching. But I do have a lot of lines on my throat plate, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use the three quarter inch mark. And my eye is actually right here. I'm not even looking. I always look where I want to go rather than where I am. I always use the analogy of mountain biking. <laughs> I know it's kind of a weird analogy, but that's because like in mountain biking, um, you look where you want your tire to go because otherwise if you look at the pothole, your tire is going to go into the pothole and that's not good. And so you're trained as a mountain biker to always look where you want your tire to land. And I feel like it's the same in sewing. I feel like it's better to look where you want to go, like right in front of the needle right here. Or right now I was like guiding this right there. I knew my machine would sew it okay. I'm gonna do, I think I have enough width to do another. Mm, what do you guys think? You think it's second row? That looks kind of classy. I kind of like that. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it. I like that. All right, let's do our other one. This is the first couple days where it's actually cool. Like I'm wearing pants today and I wore them the other day as the first time. I don't know why I just backstitch. You don't really need to because it's all gonna get enclosed and sewn so many times. You don't need a backstitch for something like that. I think I cut this a little wonky. See how that's a little narrower than right there. Maybe I cut this spot too wide. I was cutting pretty quickly. And I use a rotary knife. Okay, I'm gonna edge stitch. I'm right, pushing it in there because I really don't want to stretch out this opening here. Because it's gonna lay flat right on top of our pant. Yeah, and that'll be a good opportunity to use the double needle top stitch. That sounded funny. I'm gonna do it from the top again, so I get the same exact look. I'm gonna put my pins in, and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of sliding this all the way to the edge, since I'm not ironing it. And this way I'm keeping it right there. I don't typically use a lot of pins when I sew for my quote unquote day job, but I do when I'm doing garment sewing. And I'm going to use them more here, just because um, I'm sewing live on camera. <laughs> and I want to ensure success. Ooh, I'm way off right there. I'm taking it out. I don't want to be off, and I'm going to take it out from the beginning because I don't want to back stitch right there. I started to aim for the uh, half inch line instead of the three quarter. I'm going to be gentle because I because this fabric is kind of unforgiving for the removal. This is how I always hold my seam ripper, by the way. I was taught by this crotchety old woman in the tailoring shop. And yes, I can call her that. She was terrible. She was, I won't even describe some of the things she used to say. <laughs> Just know that some people in life who are not nice people, they still grow up to be old. They're not cute. 
They grew up to be old and they still are like that. But I learned a lot of really great things working there. Um, even though she hired me under false pretenses and um, I was doing the work that I shouldn't be doing. I still learned a lot. I just went with it. And then I didn't stay there for very long because it was kind of a commute when I didn't have a car. But that was what she taught me, was always holding my seam ripper like this, especially when you use those little blue ones. I actually like the little, the little blue ones and I would put the cap on the end to make it a little longer. You're more secure and your, your thumb can help you. Um, this way you're not, you're not doing this where you have, it's actually too wiggly. I can't describe it. I so, it's so, um, at first it was so weird to do it that way and she made me. It didn't matter that if it didn't work for me. I had to do it her way. And so I, first I was like, well, I'll just do it your way in front of you because I was kind of an obstinate, you know, young person and I thought I knew better. And then I just got used to it and I found myself doing it because it was better. Um, I'm not, I'm, my pride is not so great that I will forego a good technique <laughs> because I was a cocky young thing. That didn't last long. I wasn't cocky for long. It's like the more you learn about something, the more you know you don't know. You know what I mean? Like, the more I learn about something, the more I realize how much more I have to learn. That's why, like, I, I know that, like, people say I'm an expert in this, but I still feel like I'm not. Like, I, my sewing has gotten very niche for a certain style of sewing. And um, I've kind of, you know, not, I don't do a lot of the types of things that people sew. I don't do wedding dresses or fancy fabrics. I don't do costumes, uh, fur, burlap, and any kind of piles not allowed in my office. So, you know, my skills have definitely gotten into a certain niche. So I don't really feel like I'm an expert at all in everything. Just, I just like to sew what I like to sew. Okay, so you know um, what I'm gonna do to make this curve a little less painful? Because you know how when you fold under a curve and top stitch it down, you get those little like points and bumps. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna assume that it's like a 3 8 inch. Sorry, I keep snapping my thing. I'm still getting used to the heel lift. Um, a 3 8 inch roll under edge. It's not gonna be very wide because if there's a curve, usually it's a narrower seam allowance like on necklines and things. When they have 5 8 just trim a quarter of an inch off and put it down to at least 3 8 I usually use a quarter inch. I'm going to put a, a, kind of like when I put the uh, sleep, set in sleeves on this or the Hawthorne, I'm going to put a little sort of basting slash stay stitch slash gathering stitch right here. And then I'm going to, I'm going to kind of gather it up, but not. Oh, I could have made that a longer stitch. I'll do that on the next one because of the denim and because I'm go pulling on the cross grain. The cross grain's a little harder sometimes to pull on. Actually, what I'll do is, uh, I'm just gonna get rid of it right here. I don't care about that. This is more important, the curve. That's all I need. And this way, when we pull it a little bit, it will uh, want to turn under, you know what I mean? Like, I keep saying you know what I mean. I don't even know if you guys can hear me. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna pull this out about right here. That way when I go to turn this under, it'll help me. It's kind of like, I don't know if any of you saw my little Instagram video that I posted yesterday where I'm using my all. I'm really surprised how many people commented on that and looked at it because um, I post videos like that a lot on chicken boots and I feel like people are sick of seeing me sew that. But um, it really is it's such a great tool for doing stuff like that and I do sew a lot of binding. But um, the reason it looks easy is because it's the last step. You know, the last step, I've set it all up to do what I want. I don't want the last step to be hard. I have so much effort into that thing and it's at the last two steps of the whole thing. If, I, if the last step was really hard, then um, I have a potential chance of it not making it and then ruining the whole thing. You know, this doesn't apply for everything, 
but for that kind of little product, I really need it to go together really easily. And um, I set it up for success. You know, I when I attached the first few things, I made sure that it was going to turn to the uh, top side really easily. It just wants to do that. All right. So there are notches on the side seam. Basically, you know that you want them to match. And I'm going to, um, you see how that's already turning? I'm just going to pin this around here just so that I know I keep into the, I just keep the pins away. That way I don't have to even remove them when I'm sewing. These pants are so long. Okay, I'm going to do this. Just like that. I'm going to put those under my machine so they can be up high here. Can you see that? It's a nice curve. Hope you can see that. Is it too dark? Just like that. The smoother that is, then I can focus on my machine stitching being smooth so that um, I don't get any of those little points, which I might because I'm kind of sewing fast. I don't want you guys to get too bored or hung up on um, what I'm hung up on. So let's make sure this is nice and flat. See, now it wants to do that. I've told it what I want to do. I used to always skip steps like that, like stay stitches. And um, I never stepped, step, uh, never skipped clipping because that's just magical. <laughs> you can't dispute that. And um, But I would do things like that. this. Like I would be like, eh, I can do it. And then I would just sit there struggling and struggling to get it on there to look nice. Why struggle? We, we are not doing this because it is faster and easier. We are making our own clothes because we want to and because we really want to be able to wear that item. Like why struggle? I'm not about the struggle. Okay. I always pin perpendicular to the seam so that I can just keep sewing right over the um, pins. I'm just going to look at it a little bit and now I'm going to stitch it down. And you know what I could do is I'm going to stitch it on the side seams here. Ooh, I think I might wait until I, I've got it on there. Because just in case I need to adjust it, like if, I, if it ooches a little bit. Like right now I'm barely to that edge there. And I should have overlocked that. Make sure that my um, garment is always all on the table so it's not pulling against the needle or dragging. It's a little overexposed, just tell me. I keep thinking I have cat hair on it, but it's just like little fibers. I think from my um, new ironing board, because it's wool. And it's brand new. Okay, so the best way to get a nice continuous thing is to try and sew nice and continuous without stopping. And you'll notice like on a curve, the pivot points over here, right? So I'm kind of controlling it over there. No need to top stitch, or I mean a uh, back stitch. If you back stitch, what can happen, that's okay. I'm gonna go with it. My next one will probably be better. Um, if you back stitch right here, you have a danger of it showing on the body of the pocket when it's encased in the seam. I feel like I could have gotten closer to the edge. Okay. What is that? That's a little because of the stretch. Okay, I'm gonna do my second one. I'm just lining it up. But if you have that twin needle for denim and you're doing this on a home machine, this would be a perfect place to do that. The places you cannot use a twin needle is um, like on a squared off back pocket and you're turning the corner. That's a specific machine that can do that in denim uh, manufacturing where um, the two needles are going sewing and then when it gets to when it gets to the corner, one stops, one keeps going, turns the corner, and then they carry back on like that. It's pretty cool. Not 
Not bad. I'll take it. It's home sewn, right? I'm not going for a couture pocket. Where's my other little pocket? Oh, there it is. Okay. And there's always this time. I'm actually not even looking at the notches because it has to fit like this. Like, I don't even need those notches. The pocket has to fit like this. It can't fit like this. It can't fit like this. It can't fit like this or like this. It's like, has to fit right there, flush at the top and on the side seam. It's the only way. Oh, I forgot my stay stitch. And we'll just do it around the curve this time. Okay. Anyone sewing along right now? Oh, just so you know, if you need, if you want to comment, YouTube makes you create what's called a channel. And that is just their silly name for an account. Um, and you do not have to start posting videos. I, they were just being clever and cute by calling your account name a channel. But if you have like Chrome or something like that or Gmail, I think it's pretty quick. If you're already in the Google system, it's basically just coming up with a little username and connecting your email to it, that's all. And then you're allowed to talk and chat and you can like like videos and um, bookmark them and save them for later, which is really nice because sometimes if you're in another platform and you want to like that video so that you can find it later, it won't let you, it'll say you have to log in to do that. Well then once you do that, you won't have to, once you create your channel, your account, you won't have to um, log in anymore. It'll all be connected, which is kind of nice because I do have that too, where it's like, oh, I want to see this later or I want to support the person and like it. And then I can't because I have to log in and there's like, I like to play games on, and I don't want to connect my gaming account to any of my Google stuff. Cause I don't want those folks to connect me to my real life. <laughs> it's just how it is, you know, keep them separate. Okay. So I have put my stay stitch into this curve. That went a lot easier because we just did it around the curve that time. We didn't need to do the whole thing, right? <laughs> Hi, Ryan. How's it going? You're sewing, but not exactly along. Awesome. Not on this. I know. I know what you're sewing. I'm making the Burnside bibs, Ryan. I don't know if you just joined. And they are overalls. This is what I'm making, just in case anybody else has just joined. I'm making these overalls and I am modifying them quite a bit, honestly. Just in subtle details, not visually. Um, I've never made them before, so wish me luck. YOLO. So it has these patch front pockets and I just put in a, what I call like a stay stitch, basting stitch, gathering type stitch just, and I just pulled on that thread a tiny bit. So then it wants to curve under when I go to top stitch it down. I don't want it to pull too much. I don't want it to like ripple under here cause I can feel it in a couple spaces spots wanting to do that. Let's look at that. And I'm actually going to look at it next to the other one because I really don't want them to be asymmetrical. So here, how about we pull this up a little bit more? Oh, shoot. Sorry guys. Like that. Can you see more? I know it's kind of overexposed, but that's because of the black. There's that one. It looks the same to me pretty much. 
I know, Ryan. It's so funny. Like, I actually am a little nervous to sew these because I'm modifying so many little things on it that I'm like, oh gosh, maybe I should have planned this out a little better. But I want these so bad. All I keep thinking about is all the things that I want to wear these with. They seem really versatile. I am all about overalls coming back. I was saying, like, I feel like it hasn't been socially acceptable to wear them since I was pregnant. Yes, never leave the house. I'm leaving the house in these, sorry. It's happening, people. As long as they don't look too frumpy in them. I want a continuous curve, but I think my gathering line was a little tighter this time, and I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not stitching any puckers underneath. I also want to make sure I get a right angle right here for that nice touch. Let's get rid of all these pins. Yeah, I picked this denim because I didn't have a whole lot of choices. There were a lot of things I could make them. I, I shouldn't say that there weren't a lot of choices. There weren't a lot of choices that I was looking for for this particular garment at the fabric store. Like I wanted something, it's really easy to just go crazy and then I'd need another pair that, that went with everything but I wanted something that went with everything. And what I ended up with has a little more stretch than it probably should. It has a lot more stretch than it probably should because it doesn't need stretch at all. And the way I justified this was thinking, well, at least then that'll offer some drape since I went the denim route and most people who are making these are doing them in linen. I don't want linen because I don't want wrinkles in my butt. So sue me. See, there's some, see that? There's some puckering right there from the gathering stitch. Probably could have been a little more relaxed. Right there. But not bad. Not bad at all. All right. So I could do the back pockets, but I kind of want to like start sewing these together. So I'm going to do my um, front rise. I searched all the edges so you didn't have to wait for me to do that. And, um, you know, if I knew how this fit, I would probably serge them together if I wasn't also like needing to bounce back and forth. These, these have half inch seams, so I need to kind of get a little bit better. I didn't trim anything off when I surged. I really want to make sure I do not stretch out the rise. But if I knew that these, how these fit, some of the seams I would have just surged together like this one. Um, I wouldn't keep them open. There's, there's, there's reasons to, but I didn't, I don't need to. I will keep it open on the side seam because these look really baggy and um, I am wanting a cropped version and I cut the full length so I have room to do that. But um, I really wanted to be able to adjust them. And by surging them individually, I can adjust them to my heart's content, you know? All right. And then there is this, like, sandwich step happening. Okay. So, you know, oh, you know what I need? I need, where's my... So when I'm saying D rings, this is what I mean. I'm gonna put these at the top. Let's see if this little piece, this piece will work. I'm going to make my little, um, cause what I need to do is attach these. And I can decide on my tie later. Get my loop turner out, I love this gizmo. We love this. Right, Rayan? I use this for the tie on the Charlie Kaftan. So you don't have to use a safety pin. Safety pin works, it's cheaper. <laughs> but if you have to do this a lot. So I think, I'm trying to decide if I want to fold it along the edge, and I think I might. <clears throat> My problem with that is that this edge is thinner than this edge when I put the fold on the, like when I fold it like this with the seam on this edge. The other option is I could do it down the middle like this, but then I have the danger of there being a ridge right there. But this is actually flatter overall, 
So I, I actually think I'm going to do this. And I'm going to stitch along the edges just to secure it. No one's going to see the back side of that because it's going to, you're going to see in a second, it's just going to secure my D-ring. To the, um, this is actually even way longer than I need. So it's going to go like this on the top of my bib like that. Does that make sense? And then my tie is going to come through, not through there. Not meaning K-N-O-T. So I'm just going to stay stitch this across like that. I will, I will tighten that up even more. Like I don't want a lot of, I don't want this going on. Like I'll probably, actually, I'm going to stitch a damp right here, too. I like to keep this kind of secure. It's just my pre personal preference. There is a sexier way to do that, but this will work because it's not going to really be seen at all. Here's my other one. If I had a, a, I have a zipper foot for this machine. Um, I could get a little closer. Okay. This will get inserted into the seam at the top of the bib. Like this. And the reason I'm doing it right now is because I think I'm going to, um, line this right now so let's see i think what i want is about that much showing so i'm going to try and get as close as possible like that And yes, I am figuring this out on the fly, but I, I do that a lot at my machine. And I, I feel like it's made me a better sewist because sometimes I'm not sure how I'm going to accomplish it until I kind of hint it a few different ways and look at it. And the reason I'm doing this is because the way I saw that you finished the bib um, lining to it looked a little more work than I really want it to be. So I'm going to, I think, I'm going to sew around this perimeter, finish that, I'm going to leave this open. That's not what you do in the pattern. And that is because I am adding this uh, button side facing. Well, actually, no, I'm going to finish that. And I'll tell you why, because the button is going to, the button flap is going to come from the back. And then I'm going to put the buttons on, I'm going to put the button holes on the front and then the buttons on the back. I'm trying to remember what a bib looks like. I just want to make sure I'm not going to get myself into trouble. So this is like one big sandwich, the way they have you do this. There is a front waistband that gets top stitch on top of this like this, once you have it all sewn together. Um, and the way I am doing this, I think what I can do Yeah, yeah, this way I won't have to do any hand sewing. <laughs> we all know how I feel about that. <laughs> Let's see, I may get myself into trouble, you guys. <laughs> Bear with me. Where'd my other D-ring go? Oh no, I lost it. I need it right now. Did I throw it over here? Eek. All right, do you guys see it? <laughs> Must be right here. Anyone see it? Where is it? One. Well, shiver me timbers. Just disappeared. these 
All right, let me go grab another one. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, right back. I found it. You guys, come on, I'm going crazy here. Okay. So, I'm going to, so, I'm gonna finish these guys. That's my waistband. So I'm gonna attach this like this first. Just tack it down. I'm a little worried this lining is kind of lightweight, but I didn't want to add to the um, bulk of the whole thing. So normally this view would have a zipper on the side seam on one side. And we know that this fabric can stretch out, so I'm really being gentle. I do not want it to get stretched out in this part right here or wavy. I need to kind of move this out of the way to be able to sew by it. And once I pivot, I can put it back over there. I'm running out of space there. Yee. It's kind of a big D-ring. I really had to ooch it there. I didn't have any smaller D-rings. I was pretty disappointed that I didn't have metal ones. I think they would look way better on this. They would be a little classier. Um, but the knot on these is probably going to obscure it mostly. Okay, so I'm just trying to get... It's getting, it's getting stretched out, I can tell. That's why I'm pulling on the cotton. This will be good. The cotton will stabilize it. Because the jeans are actually poly cotton, so I'm just calling this the cotton. So... I'm hoping I can get this like uh, a shape I really like too. This right here, because it looks a little messy right now. Wasn't made for this. Get back to my seam allowance. Got a little off track up there. Yep, I want to finish this. This feels really weird. Okay, I'm gonna straighten that out. The stretch is pushing my uh, needle away. Trim, trim the corners. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of doctoring right here at the neckline. I can tell. The D-ring is just too big. So I'm making it work. Clip my curve. Make sure it's deep enough when you get close to that curve. All right, moment of truth. When I turn corners, I always do this, kind of poke my finger in there to get it right. And then this is where my awl is a little bit handy as well. Using a seam ripper, you have the danger of um, cutting the fabric because that's a blade along the, the long pointy end of the seam ripper. So see, that's my... I'll 
probably take out that stay stitching there so it looks nicer. Because I don't want to go back by it right now. It was too tricky. I don't want to break my needle. Okay, I think I could have done a much better job on this. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> we are doing this on the fly today. It's kind of like my uh, prototype version. I don't want my lining to show on the outside. I picked this pattern drafting print. It's pretty cute. I just thought it goes good kind of with the overall theme. I'm a pattern drafter myself, so I, I've always liked this fabric. And I haven't really used it for anything on for me. I wanted to do an ironing board cover, but it's too thin. Okay, so I'm going to do a bit of a edge stitch. And this is where I'm also going to make sure that the lining goes to the inside. Trying not to stretch out. I really want to pull on this, but I'm going to try not to stretch out this armhole. I said I'd try and figure out some music for us, didn't I? And then um, I kind of forgot to do that. I thought about it, but I forgot. I feel like some background music would be kind of nice. Oh, you know what? I don't think I trim. I don't think I clipped my neckline, so I'm gonna clip it right now. It's not much of a curve, but I just want to make sure. I'm not gonna take the needle out right now because I want the stitching to be continuous. So I'm just gonna go back and do this right now. I was really focused on those armholes. I need sharper scissors, scissor tips. I don't really like those little scissors. They don't stay sharp. Don't cut your garment underneath, as I say to myself. Okay. That's better. A little weird. The D ring is making it really push a certain way, and I'm trying to tell it that no, this is what I want. You will do what I tell you to do. <laughs> and I, I might add a bib pocket. Like, what do you guys think? Like, a bib pocket, I think, would just be. It would be cute. It might be a little too cutesy. That's my thing. I thought about adding that. Um, lace ribbon that I put on the back pocket, but I just don't really want to go overkill on that. Okay, not my finest sewing. They're not even symmetrical, are they? Oh, yeah, they are. Okay, okay, it's fine. I'm going to get rid of this right now. I didn't think this would show, or I thought it would show, but it, I think if it were in black thread, it would be, it'd be better. And I got really close, so I don't need it now. So I'll just remove it. And then I don't even have to worry about it then. I'm going to do it on the side too. It'll make it look nicer. The funny thing with garment sewing is even if you sew a muslin, you're still sewing that garment for the first time when you're sewing for yourself. And you know, in the garment industry, it's not like that. They sew a lot of them, a lot before that goes to production. And then it's in production, it's over and over and it's broken down by steps and one person doesn't sew the whole thing. 
one person sews one step or two steps. And so um, I feel like we're at such a disadvantage when we garment sew because we're only doing one. So it's like a prototype every time. And it's so great when you find those patterns that you really like to have and you make multiples at one time because you can just kind of batch sew it. So even if I put a bib pocket on this, I don't mind the stitching showing on the inside. It also makes the pocket more secure and it won't drag down and pull away from the lining. So that's going to be my little bib. And then so the, there'll be buttons here, buttonholes here. <laughs> I keep doing that in the reverse. And my little facing will lay under here so it'll have a side opening like that. And so then there is this waistband. And so this is how you get a, you get to like completely finish your waist front because you're going to do it wrong sides to the inside of the lining like that. I want a facing. I want a facing for my um, side here. That's what I need. That is what I'm missing. I knew I'd be missing something for that. I'm gonna get a scrap of fabric. I'm gonna cut one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna make a little facing for the side of my pant. And the reason I'm gonna do that also is so that, um, because it's an opening, right? So I need it to be finished. Wasn't intended for this, so I'm kind of, you know, telling it what I want. But I also need a little bit of extra for the buttonholes to be reinforced. So I'm gonna overlap that like it's gonna be sewn. About an inch, it's a half inch seam allowance, so half inch here and a half inch on the way, so I overlap it an inch like that. This is the little facing that's going to come to the front. It's gonna have seam allowance, so it's gonna be like that. So it's gonna be about that long. So I want my facing to at least come down to here. I'm trying to figure out like what this is what this is similar to. I feel like it's kind of like a zipper fly, but not. I'm gonna cut two of them. And actually what I'll think I'll do is just trace this with my little charcoal liner thingy, which I love. Do you guys have you guys seen this thing? That's amazing. Such an amazing tool. Like that. That's how long I want it. And then um, I'm gonna cut the waist off like this. I'm, I'm like figuring this out right now. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do. That's about how long I want it. So let's see, do I want my facing? I think I want it to be longer. I'm trying to think what I'd like the look of. Let's see. Maybe I'll make it about this wide. I love these see through rulers because what I'm doing is just marking a parallel distance right there so I know that that is the same. I use the ruler this way and this way. Okay. So, let's cut the ooh, goodness.
All right, so my facing for my buttons, I could just overlock the edge and then sew it like this. So that'll be like that. That'll be finished and like that. What do you guys think? I'm trying to think like what I want. I have a few like ideas of what I would like this to look like. And I think that um, if I make, I want it to be kind of narrow. So I'm gonna surge this. Consider this my muslin because once I figure this out, I'll know exactly what I want to do next time, and I can make a pattern piece for it. So I think I'm going to do kind of the quick and dirty thing, where I'm going to um, sew and turn this, and then just top stitch it down. And I'm going to trim it a little, a little narrower. This is what I want. This is pattern drafting at the sewing machine. <laughs> you guys sticking with me? <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be cutting on this edge. I don't want to cut my surging edge. Okay. Okay. So what I'm trying what I'm trying to think about right now is how I'm going to treat this right here because this is still going to get sewn into the side seam and I think um, I'm going to figure that out as I go. Just haven't done this in a while. All in the effort for mods. that like that and then I can sew my uh, side seam to there kind of like a um, uh, side seam pocket right I'm gonna edge stitch this quick and dirty side button facing majiggy And then I'm going to turn it to this side and I'm going to top stitch it down. I can feel where it's at. It's a pretty big ridge right there. That's why I'm doing it from the top. I thought about doing a curve, but I'm not going to. I actually thought this buttonhole opening was going to go deep into the pocket down here, and it doesn't. I'm kind of glad it doesn't. I think that the because the way the pocket is, it has its own challenges for doing this this way. Definitely beating this pattern into my own little thing. Let's hope we like the outcome, but we're going to learn if we don't, right? Okay, so now I have, and I'm, I'm probably gonna clip that, so don't worry about it, I know it looks funny. I just wanna leave it, my options open there before I do. Cause you never know what'll happen between now and then. Okay, so um, let's put this bib on now. 
Let's hope I got the uh, width right. Because <laughs> now it's going to match. Ah, but see, I didn't think about that. So now my edges on this are unfinished. See, this is such a weird way to sew this. And this isn't because of my mods. Um, yeah, I'm just going to... I'm going to go for it. So yeah, the way they have you do it is you lay the pant in this order, the bib, and you usually would, you wouldn't have done this part yet, so you would just do the wrong side together. But in my case, I finished the whole bib already because I'm not going to do a side zipper opening. I'm getting some sort of weird video output thing. How's it look? I've never seen that before. All right, so I'm gonna do set half inch seams. And a good idea would be to mark the center of your bib. That way you can just match it to the center of your pants. And same with this guy. Let's mark him too. Like that. Just like this. I'm gonna put the weight of my pants up onto the machine. Okay, once I get it going, then I'm going to adjust and make sure that I'm meeting all of my targets. So there's my center, there's my center, there's my center, just like that. These need to match, just like that. All the threads are going up into the waist. So then there's less mess. This is a great way to cut down on that. And this gets hung off by about a half inch. That's the seam allowance. It's a bib sandwich. And I don't mean the bib lettuce kind. I want this to line up, so I'm really gonna make sure it does. I'm actually gonna pin it too, just to make sure. Okay. So now what you do, now you have a clean inside finish. See, this is why, they, why I'm doing it this way too. Because otherwise if I had done the lining, this lining later, I would have had to like do the whole like top stitch thing and hand stitching and yada, yada, yada. We know Sarami doesn't hand stitch. I'm really lazy. I don't know if you know that about me. Can't you tell? Okay, so I'm gonna start from the center and go out. Maybe actually, I'm gonna top stitch this first so that um, it makes it a little easier. And now this is the tricky part because I forgot we finished this side seam right there. I'm gonna wrap it around that edge there like that. And I'm gonna edge stitch that later. So you see what I just did there? I wrapped it around my raw edges there, like that. And then put it up there. This is really thick. I'm just gonna warn you. This may be a little too much for a home machine. I hate threading my needle in front of you guys. It goes really easily when you're not watching, I promise. Okay. So, put that back in there. Deal with that in a second. I'm gonna try and cover that little edge there. Okay, I get it going. Got my needle in there. 
put the weight of the pants up on the machine bed and then top stitch it down. This denim is so stretchy I'm just really trying not to. It's really fighting me. It's kind of partly why the sewing doesn't look as good as it does because it's not uh, um, woven. It's a stretch woven. So I'm just edge stitching this and the reason I'm doing this now is because then it'll make it a lot easier to do this one here. Kind of sewing I really like. I really love top stitching. I like very constructed items and I know it looks clunkier that I didn't know exactly what I'm doing before I started with you today but it's the kind of the sewing I kind of like. I like figuring things out and figuring out why because it makes me, it builds on my skills. I, next time I'll know what to do and I, I know that this is transferable to some other project even if it's not the exact same thing. So I'm wrapping my seam allowance again around those seam allowances, just clean finishing it. Now, if I were really slick, I would just turn the corner and go. So I'm not going to do that because I actually want to start from this side and do it. And because I don't want the, the pants to go through the hole here of the machine. That's looking pretty good, you guys. What do you think? They look like overall. Those are some pockets. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to pin this now. I want to pin it from facing the direction, but this will be better. And I'm going to use my ruler. It's probably hard for you to see. I'm just going to do perfect two inches. Getting things like this nice and parallel and even. Sometimes even if your sewing's not that great, but if things are symmetrical and all the threads are trimmed, um, it'll look a thousand times better. Oh, that's funny. That didn't actually catch in there when I top stitched it down, but we'll get it caught in now. This is a great time for my all because I can just push that in there. And I, if I do it at right angles, it'll be in there a little better. And I want to line it up with this edge because we're just going to top stitch it down. That's my solution. No one says I can't do it that way. This is actually going to be really easy to do. I'm pleased. Going to slide that under there. You can see, it. and I unthreaded my needle again. Great. It's like perform. It's like performance art, right? I have to like thread my needle in front of you guys. Okay. Doing a two-inch width, just because it's an easy number to remember. And um, and once I get all this pin, I'm going to look at it and make sure I like it. You can see where to contrast top stitching would be really fun. It's also a danger because you can be wiggly and it's really obvious when you are wiggly with your top stitching. I really thought about using this orange, but I just thought it would limit the use of the pants and I don't want to do that. I already have the, um, you know, the mustard pocket, just one, but still. I think, you know, it's easy to get sucked into having all the autumn feels right now and then my wardrobe look like autumn when I'm going to wear these in the winter or wear these probably in the spring. And changing topics, one of the good things is, I don't know why, but I got a lot of fat. When I ordered the fabric for this, I got exactly what the pattern said. And I don't, I'm sure she didn't cut it wrong, but I have a lot of extra fabric. So I think I'm going to try making a sh pair of shorts out of the ginger jeans pattern just as my mock-up for how those fit. All right, how does that look? Okay, so I'm going to start here because you always want the smaller piece to go through your machine. 
And my awl is going to be handy because I'm going to try and tell this what I want it to do. Oh, that's right. I got to grab my needle. Let's trim it first. I was, I've been thinking about bringing my dog here, and I was going to today because my family's out of town, and I don't want her to sit at home all day today. But um, I'm afraid she'll bark or something like UPS will come by because it's been a while since she's been here. And she used to be a little bit barky when we bring her here because she was kind of new to us. But um, you might be seeing my dog here. I get a lot less deliveries this time of year, so um, it'd be a good time of year to bring her. And my family's out of town, so um, I can uh, have the molly wobbles here. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's so stretchy. It wants to get all wild on me. Okay. I'm just going to let this do its thing, let my machine pull it forward. I'm not going to fuss with it, but I don't want that. Don't do that. That's just, you can see, can you see I see the stretch happening? <laughs> it's like pushing it away from my machine, my presser foot. That's why I don't really want to pull on it because I don't want to get that happening. I don't want that stretch to start happening because it can make the garment look like it's slanting if you're pushing your stretch, like pushing the fabric away. If I had gone this way on this one and that way on that one, it could actually make the waistband look, you know, slanted and like it's torquing or that it could, it could torque. So um, sometimes raising and lowering the presser foot will release the tension of the fabric and make it stop pushing through there. But I feel like I got a little off the edge here. Let's see if I can get in there. That lump of seam allowance is making it push out. That and the stretch. Eek! That's really thick. Yeah, I get nervous on that stuff too, guys. Ah, that could be a little nicer over here. What do you think? Let me know. They look like overalls, huh? <laughs> I'm excited about that. All right, so let's do our backs now. We have our fronts. Our fronts are done, except for buttonholes. These are going together really fast, I will say that. So there's a dart on these. I'm going to sew that first. Um, this pin should actually be on the inside because it is for my dart. I know that's where the pin went in and that's how I like to mark it and that's why I knew where to go. So that's my little method. I feel like I always say that like Figure out what works for you so that when you come back to your sewing, you know what your pins mean. And typically, um, I think you should go with the first thing that pops into your head because it's probably gonna be the first thing that pops into your head the next time you're sitting there. So I know for me personally, it's where my pin went in, not that part, just ignore that. And that's where the dart is marked. And I know that's my dart because the rest of it's my pocket. There was actually four um, spots that were marked, but I only did three of them just to make sure I got it this way and you know, straight this way and this way. This is a gigantic dart. <laughs> it is a long, look at this thing. It's like one of the longest darts I've ever sewn, <laughs> besides fisheye. Okay. So I'm, I'm very gentle when I sew a dart because darts are there to add contour to the garment and you want it to be as seamless and smooth as possible and invisible as possible. So, um, 
I am really gentle when I do it. I don't want it to pull. I want it to be symmetrical. And when I get to the end, I'm just going to go off the edge and then hand tie. I don't back stitch. I pull my thread take up lever to the top. That way I don't unthread my needle. That's the trick with that. If you pull your thread, if you leave your, your thread take up lever at the top of your machine every time you stop, then you won't um, unthread your needle the next time you go to press the foot pedal. So I just hand tie it. That. Okay, when we're dark, we'll do our back pockets. I feel like I may need another project by Saturday. I thought I'd be doing these for both. I hey, maybe, who knows, we'll see. Oh, I almost forgot, okay. Mine automatically clips the thread, so I have to really remember not to push back on my heel because it'll, um, Clip the threads and then I'd have to either backtrack and start over or backstitch. I didn't want to backstitch. Okay, so there's my dart. And now we'll put on our pocket. <clears throat> Look how huge that rise is. <laughs> you guys, that thing is really huge. Why am I just now noticing that? I think it goes up above my waist. That, that's what I'm, ho I'm hoping. Anyone know? <laughs> Ask for a friend. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this side. An easier way to do your pocket would be, you know, to iron it. Um, oh, actually, I'm gonna see where they like to put it. So that's always my pin that went in. So it looks like they marked it about five eighths of an inch or three quarters of an inch of an inch in. So that's how much I know how to hang off right there. I may have to adjust it going this direction. I'm just going to pin this down first and get that one seated there. Like that. So I'm just going to overlap that little pin by about an eighth of an inch. Oh yeah, so I could have probably dropped it. I'm not going to drop it. That's only a quarter of an inch to the back pocket. I really like the mustard trim. What do you guys think? It looks kind of cute. It's so close to my side seam. Hmm. Let me look at these first. So I don't, I really don't think you can get away with using a double needle. Um, you know, the, what was, where's the needle I showed you earlier? I, I don't think you can get away with using this. This is a stretch one, but they make them for denim as well. I don't think you can get away with it with this. You might be able to, but I don't think, I think that's too much of a, it's not a gradual of enough of a slant there because you, the needle will not, it just won't work <laughs> because this distance and this distance are different lengths when you get do the whole perimeter of the pocket. Does that make sense? I don't want to explain it again if it's boring, you guys, because you may have heard me say that at the beginning. But um, you can't sew right angles with a double needle unless you had one needle walking independently of the other. So you just have to do it by your, your guy on the fly anyway. Okay, I'm going to see if this is symmetrical. There's nothing like uh, asymmetrical butt pockets, right? Looks pretty good. What do you think of my mustard lace? It's kind of cute, huh? Okay, so I think, I think I will do a double stitch. So otherwise I would have probably gone like this, done a triangle like that and around. I love doing those. Um, one of my pet peeves is when your pocket, I actually have really nice jeans at home by this company. I love the fit of, but they do something really drives me crazy. And it's 
that this right here unravels and then that sticks out of my pocket and it just makes everyone look right there at my butt, you know? I don't like that. Um, and so there would probably be a, a great thing to do would be to, you know, you could actually sew this and finish that little edge before you put the hem on. I could do it on the other one. I'll show you what I mean. That's just so close to the side seam. What the heck? I think, well, and it's funny because this version, the one with the dart, is the one with the back pocket. The other one is not. Probably because it's just too gathered to have a back pocket. Um, I'm going to go like a half stitch forward right there. Sink my needle in. Got a lot of stuff going on here. I need to get rid of some of this stuff here. I don't like it when stuff starts flying off my table. Yeah, a little wrinkly. I'm really hoping that washes um, in. Just kind of smooths it out. Nope, I'm not letting that happen. <laughs> you see it? It's it's happening. I'm going to trim it. I'm going to get rid of it. Pet peeves. That's why we hand so home so we can uh, we can get rid of those pet peeves. We don't need to stand for that. If I trim it enough, it'll get included in the double needle top stitching and I won't have to worry about it. There we go. Okay. I do like the gray top stitching. I know it probably doesn't look like it on your um, screen. I like that it doesn't completely blend in and um, it does offer a tiny bit of interest. And I feel like the orange would have been just too much. Um, it would have limited the use of the pants and it would have been a lot easier to see any little bobbles I did. I'm actually going to go across the top right here. I should have done it on the other side. That way I've encased that little edge I cut. Now I'm going to do it on this side. Pet peeve be gone. There we go. That's cute. Ridiculously close to the side seam. I'm a little nervous about that. <laughs> but I'm trusting. Okay. Oh, I already sewed these, didn't I? Yeah. All right, well, we'll just do our little trick again. But see, like I'm, tr I'm trimming all this off right now. I know you can't see me doing that. Sorry if I pull it away from the, under the camera. Mainly just to keep it off my table. Okay. Already have our dart. I kind of like that the end point of the dart finishes inside the pocket. So I don't get some, you know, weird butt point. <laughs> it's a thing. I'm going to look at my other pocket a little bit. I'm looking at the chat. That's what I. That's why I keep looking right there. I want to make sure I'm not missing any questions or anything. You guys are very quiet today. 
feel free to ask any questions or make me repeat something or challenge me. I really liked it the other day when uh, when I was showing, showing that Charlie Captain that someone was in the stream saying, hey, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. And I could say why I didn't or I could say, yeah, I did. Here it is right here. You just can't see it very well on the camera. I, I want to hear that because <clears throat> sometimes that's part of my style of how I sew. I'm a I'm sewing home sew patterns with production style techniques, mainly because I find them easier and I get things done faster. And um, I'm not going for a prize at the fair with my sewing or any couture things. I've had those phases in my sewing life where I was really interested in sewing like that and I love it. But it's not what I'm into right now. I'm into getting things done. This isn't an inexpensive hobby and making it as pleasurable, successful, and speedy as possible, I feel like makes us get to do more of it. You know what I mean? And um, anytime that we can make it something we look forward to, we're not worried, we're going to be frustrated over, I'm down for that. And it's kind of the style of sewing I have. I have a lot of experience in the garment industry. I love inspecting garments on the racks at stores. Um, it's just getting harder and harder to find really nice techniques because they're getting more and more budget sew or they're getting more specialized in the machines that they use that we don't have access to. And um, sometimes those machines aren't even manned by a person. They are automatic. It's, it's really cool to see. Like I, I am kind of a nerd when it comes to that kind of thing. But at the same time, I would much rather people be sewing my clothes because I would rather employ people. All right, so <clears throat> just looking at my pockets, making sure that they're symmetrical. I feel like this one's further over this way than that one is, and so what I think I'll do is make this seam allowance over here a little less. That way, oh, I feel like it's so overexposed. Is that bugging you guys? When I take this one off, it gets better. That's so funny. Okay, whoops, I want to take this one off. So I'm gonna make this seam allowance right here a little bit smaller so that it gets closer to my side seam rather than reposition the whole pocket. Position makes is more noticeable than the size when it comes to a back pocket. Okay. And everyone's gonna be looking at the other pocket, right? Because it's cute. It's got the lace. I've always wanted to use that lace. I bought it for a project a long time ago, and then I ended up really not being into the fabric that I bought it to go with. And I still have that fabric. There's, it's so interesting, but I feel like, on one hand, it looks like um, <laughs> pajamas. <laughs> Maybe that's what I should make, is pajamas. Oh, I didn't even think of that till just now. I very much process things verbally and visually. Is anyone sewing anything right now? I know you are, Ryan, if you're still here. That's what you do. Okay, so I am going to trim this right now. I'm gonna trim this one right now. I'm not taking my needle out yet. And I'm gonna keep going. Let's see, I'm just gonna check to see if that's the width I want it is. See, there we go, it's even cleaner now. It looks much nicer when you can just do it all in one. And it makes you better sewer because you have to go left to right. I don't think I got my uh, pivot that time just directly centered over the point. Me, I didn't. Okay. Took a half stitch off. There we go. Less uh, threads to cut, obviously. So there's only one start and stop and it's in the same spot. 
Alrighty, let's do our back rise. So I need to start thinking about how I'm going to do the waist treatment as well now because I am going to be adding the back waist elastic. And <laughs> I don't know how I'm doing that yet. <laughs> I don't have a casing, but I'm wondering if how the back waist facing is sewn because I don't think it's a waistband, but I'm not, I can't remember. And then, um, but maybe I could insert the elastic into that. Maybe I'll make my ties and then I can um, sew that and then we can pause and I can do the backs on Saturday. That way I can also fit my bibs and make any adjustments I need before then. That way they, I can maybe finish them complete and you don't have to wait for that part. Really don't want to stretch this rise out. Now if this was um, not a loose uh, pant, I would be, hi Christina, um, I would be probably top stitching the rise, but I'm not going to, I want it to be softer. What are you making? You're cutting out a pencil skirt and you're trying to decide if Ponte de Roma has a right and wrong side. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> right? I know, some of these fabrics, I actually got a fabric back from the, um, well, I got back from the store. And I lucked out that my fabric had the sticker. Sometimes the manufacturers put a sticker on it that says this is the right side or this is cut face side up. And um, it, my piece of fabric went through the laundry and that sticker was still on there. And I was like, yes, this is great because gosh, that one fabric I sewed the other day, I could barely tell. You might Google it, Christina. There may be a trick. I know like with um, certain knits, Knits are really obvious to me, but some people, what they do is when you cut it and then you pull it, it'll curl to, I can't remember if it curls to the, I think it curls to the right side or something like that. Don't quote me on that. Like for jerseys and interlocks and things. Um, but as a knitter, I think it's easier for me to tell. Aw, look at my butt. These things are, the rise is gigantic, you guys. I'm kind of nervous. I'm trusting. I'm trusting big time. Okay, but I'm gonna look at this little facing. Okay, so let's look at the directions, shall we? I wanna see what the back waistband, if it is a, cause see this doesn't show me if the back waistband is um, above the waist, like this, or is it like this? but I know how else I can tell. I can just lay the pattern pieces there. Here they are. Okay, so they are a facing like that. So that is going up on my, above my waist. Phew. <laughs> I can tell the jersey, but I think it's a double knit, so maybe it doesn't matter. You know, I would pick the side you like. It's really rare that it matters like functionally as far as like having a mistake or um, it doing like eyelet. Eyelet sometimes is really hard to tell, especially really nice eyelet, but that would actually probably have some detrimental, uh, you know, repercussions if you sewed it out the wrong side out and then because the little threads would eventually fray, but that's eyelet. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, Christina. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. So if this is if this goes like that, then I'm gonna put. I also need to cut my elastic. That's right. I want to put that on there because these are very symmetrical. Also, make sure I get my. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the center back seam right now so I don't forget. There's notches on both sides, but I didn't notch that one because I didn't find it to be one I needed. I knew what it was for. I don't need to uh, search this because it's going to be fully in case. So it's basically a facing like that. That's what it's going to do. It's a super wide facing. And, um,. I'm trying to decide if I really want the elastic or not. Let's 
So here is my little side button facings that I'm gonna do. And I realize I actually have jean buttons because we use them on the accordion. <laughs> I'm going to cut this at an angle just because it's cool. I want it to be like, yeah, I want it to be like that. Okay. What are you making? You're making a pencil skirt. That's right. That'll be cute. A little stretch skirt. This is just a shape. I'm just doing a shape. That's all. Just shaping the bottom edge. Kind of like you do on a fly. All my scissors need to be sharpened, you guys. It's it's a tragedy right now. I moved away from um, somewhere where I used to have a scissor sharpener. That was six years ago, and I just haven't trusted anyone since. I know. I'm lame that way. Really just need to find a scissor sharpener. This is, I'm just processing what I'm doing. Like, I'm not exactly sure. So I know, I just kind of get rid of steps where I'm like, I know this is what I need to do. Maybe I don't and I have to go back. But I'm going to, um, as, it's like how I process things. I kind of think from the inside out. So sewing it will help me. So this is the little facing that's going to go under those uh, buttonholes. It's going to have the buttons on it. And it's going to go into the buttonholes that will be on the front, on the side right here. Remember that? So it'll stick out like this. Oh, and I did do that wrong. That's so funny. I knew that was wrong when I did that. That's so funny. Hmm. That's, I knew that was wrong, and I still did it. I just thought, oh, you just think that's wrong because you're doubting everything right now. And so I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to straighten it out. Just leave it straight. Like that. My machine gets tired of waiting sometimes. <laughs> like that. Okay. I was always amazed when I worked in factories and I would have my own uh, sample maker. So um, every time I had a sample maker, it was a woman. So I'm going to use she, not because it's a gender stereotype, but every time I, I had, there was a man and one, but I didn't, he wasn't the sample work so that I worked with. They were amazing. Like talk about someone who knows how to figure something out without a pattern. They were just a special breed of sewer. They're usually the highest paid sewer in a factory is the sample, sample maker, sample sewer. Um, they really need to know how to make something sometimes as well as the pattern drafter does because they may not know how to draft the pattern, but they know what they need in order to do what they want to do. And so sometimes I would be like, look, this is what I want to do. Um, here's my sketch. Here's my rough pattern. And I can think of four different ways to sew this, but I know one's one's the better way. And so the sewer would be like, just just give me just to give me a few minutes. And then they would sit there and cut up little things right like I'm doing right now at the sewing machine and figure it out. And they were like, all right, this is what you want, right? And be like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Awesome. And they're like, all right, this is this is what I need. And then they would show me the pattern pieces they made right there at the, the machine. And they wouldn't be perfect. But it, as soon as I saw them, I'd be like, ah, yeah, okay, I know which kind you're going for. You know, so it was a really great partnership. If you have a good sample sewer, um, they really know how to make the best pattern with you. Ooh, do I want to, I think, do I want to top stitch this? I want to because I'm a top stitch fiend, but um, I'm not sure I'm going to. So yeah, I'm going to do that. It's actually going to be like that, right? No, 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 it's going to be like that. And it's just going to go under. I kind of want to do this. Let's see, how, how much do I have? How much play do I have here? <laughs> oh yeah, so this is longer right now.
Oh yeah, because I measured this from here. It actually is going to go way up high like this, but that's okay. <laughs> what do you guys think? See, so this will be like this. My back waist will come around with buttons on it. Right here, and then it'll so it'll be like that, and then my side seam will be just sewn right there. I don't want that. Actually, I might get rid of that. It doesn't matter though. Maybe I actually maybe I'll just continue it. That's what I want. That's what I want. But I think I might want it. See, I don't need this to be very long, because with the side zipper that they put on here was seven to nine inches long. You need a um, you need this to open enough to get it over your hips, right? It's a really baggy pattern. I think it would without these openings, and maybe I shouldn't be agonizing over this. Um, but even if I never open them, they'll be cute with the buttons on the side. And um, seven to nine inches means I only needed each of these sides to be like three and a half to four and a half inches to compensate for the loss of the zipper depth. So um, that's why I didn't make them very long. I also didn't want them to be very long because um, I don't want a bunch of, I don't want too many buttons on the side because they'll get hung up on things. And that's probably why I won't use a jean tack button. I'll probably use a regular one. Even if, maybe I'll even use a shank button but not a jean tack button because they're a little higher profile. So that's my, that's my thought process. I feel like a flat button will look cuter with this look and um, be lower profile. Yeah, I don't like how overexposed it gets me with that other piece there. So I'm trying to decide. I kind of want to put the elastic. This is not the way you would put the elastic on. That's why I'm kind of like, hmm. But I do, I would put the, um, I'm going to put the facing in here like this. Yeah, and if it can get shorter, maybe I do, would go like this. Like this, like this. There's, there's a reason for it, and I'm just trying to remember what it is. <laughs> okay, let's just go for it. Let's just see what happens. That, that's what I want. I would totally do this differently if I wasn't like modifying another pattern. There, there's like so many better ways to do this, you guys. But I don't want to change this pattern too much from the original since you guys might not be doing all these crazy things that I'm doing to it. And I just want to respect the way that they drafted the pattern without modifying it too much. This is not straight. It's bugging the heck out of me. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. Or it's stretched out or something. I'm just going to like curve it a tiny bit so it doesn't do that. Yeah, that looks better. It was really subtle, but it's still, it's still bugging me. It's because when I get to the tip there, the stretch is like making it wing out. See that? Because the um, seam allowance is so stiff, it's actually stretching out the fabric. It's kind of interesting. This is a very stretchy denim. Be good for like really tight peg leg pants or something like that. I'm just gonna tack this in place because I am winging it big time here. Okay, and then um, my face is gonna go like that. And I, I honestly would like the elastic to be in there right now. Maybe I'll grab the elastic really quick. My fear right now is that because the elastic is um, going to be up at this um, 
this isn't this by the way that's not okay <laughs> this should be the same curve oh it is okay I was a little worried about that okay um I wasn't be like that's not good pattern but it's fine you need your right angles there so I, I think I'm going to measure this amount here I know my waist, I know my hip. See that's measures at, without the seam allowance, 16 inches, which would be like 32. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna look at what, what this is. Yeah, so I'm going to, if it doesn't stretch it, uh, bring it in much, that's fine. Because remember, it's it's gonna, and I can adjust this. I have plenty of elastic. Maybe I will. I'm actually gonna do it on the other side. So I'm gonna sew this, and then I'm gonna attach it on the other side, and then I'm gonna turn it. That's my plan. Opening up my seams. If I don't say what I'm doing, just call me because I, I I know you can't see everything that I'm doing here. Pushing my dart to the center. I have to pull this little facing out of the way so I don't catch it by accident. And I think I may need to get a little closer to it. It's a little thick, so it's pushing my uh, presser foot away. Oh, I just realized something I might need to do differently. Yeah, I think, I think, ooh, like that's nice, but that's not. I need to overlock that. That would be that would be fine with me. I'm gonna no no I'm not gonna overlock it. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be almost encased. I'm gonna top stitch it down too. Okay. <laughs> I'm so big time winging this. Okay. Let's see here. I want this to be along this edge here. Did I catch it? No, I didn't catch it. Okay, just making sure. Trim this corner. And same here. Okay, now I'm going to attach the elastic. I'm just going to. I'm kind of rushing this because I really want to see what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to smooth this out. This isn't okay. Because that will show. My facing is pushing my presser foot out of the way. Looks really ugly. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to tack my... Um, elastic here and what's going to happen it's not going to look that great along the top edge it's going to do kind of a paper bag thing um, but I, I really can't get away with that I get away from that because it's on a seam so this is why having the tapered tailors all as opposed to the other one they sell is great because the other one's really sharp and it would just puncture or rip the fabric. And also I wouldn't be able to get much purchase on the um, fabric as I'm trying to pull it because the pointy one is going to just go straight through because it's, it's it, it glides in there. So that's not very straight. Okay. All 
All right, so I'm gonna top stitch this waist edge right here without getting my elastic cotton there. Ooh, do I wanna do that? No, I'm gonna try and understand. What do you think, what do you think? <laughs> okay, I'm really modifying this. I need to do something, otherwise this will happen. It'll hold to the front. But if I top stitch it right now, because there's so much stretch in the denim, it's going to um, get stretched out and do a little bit of rippling. What would be nicer is if this was just a fold over piece. So I kind of want to just edge, I'm going to understitch it and see if that helps. That's my solution to that. And maybe next time I will pick out a pattern that does, <laughs> that is how I'm wanting it to be. Cause this is a really cute pattern and I should not be changing it this much cause it's already really cute. I just know how things fit me. I made the So House Sevens Tea House dress and it's awesome. Great pattern, I will definitely make it again. I'm sure you guys have seen me wear it a few times too. That's going to make it a little softer at the top there, I think. And now I'm going to encase that into its own casing here. And I'm going to try not to catch the elastic. This I'm going to do it from the inside so that I can see that I'm not um, letting this go to the outside too really don't want to catch that elastic and I want it to go all the way up there like that right along that fold line. That's my plan. I may think that this is a bad idea and I just might take out the elastic altogether. Maybe put the belt loops in, do something different. Maybe a smaller tie. There's a lot of options. But I'm still trying to figure out if this will work. I got a little off right here. I'm going to take, I think I got, I barely did. I'm going to take it out. I'll trim that later. I'm gonna try and get right back in my same needle holes so that the back stitch looks less intrusive. I'm pulling this, pulling this, making sure my elastic is right at the top there. It's hard, I don't wanna stretch the denim out. I feel like I am stretching it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't add too much gathers, so maybe this will be okay. What the heck's going on there? There we go. So that's the back. That looks better than I, I thought, honestly. What do you guys think? To get it straightened out so it doesn't look crooked. What do you guys think? That's just a little softer than having the butt loops and the tights for me. Okay, I would finish this right now, but I kind of want to leave it available to um, any kind of modifications that I want to make when I try it on. But right now, I'm really close to being done. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot the ties, you guys. So I do have to take it out. Oh my gosh. You guys need to remind me of my little schemes that I do. I want ties back here. But you know, I can probably uh, fix them on inside here. But I would really like them to be in the seam, but I need to place those. So I'm gonna sew the tie. And then we'll call it a day um, because uh, that way I can do all the placements and the sizing and everything. 
I am just beating this pattern into submission, aren't I? I don't know if I really want this skinny of a tie. There's also these shoulder straps too. What do you guys think? <laughs> the wider one or the narrow? Because this is pretty narrow. I want it to be um, a, like a cross though. Okay, I'm just gonna make, this is the original tie pattern a little bit shorter because I knew I wouldn't be using it all. I didn't want to waste fabric. Um, it's still plenty long. Pretty sure this is how it goes. Yeah, you see it because it's just so, such a long piece. Basically, I'm flipping it. I'm gonna press the seam so that it's flat as possible. And then I'm going to sew and turn with my loop turner. Yeah, I like it with the elastic too, Christina. I think actually that of all the things I'm doing, I thought that would be the thing that wouldn't work at all. <laughs> Or it would be kind of funky and I feel like of all the things I'm doing it's working out the best that's so funny but we'll see I'll try it on and see what I think this is a really long tie it doesn't need to be this long but we're gonna give ourselves some options I also needed to allow enough to be able to tie it in the knot one thing I find really interesting is um, the length it takes to tie a knot or a bow I don't know if you guys have ever measured it like say you um, tie a ribbon around a present just measure what it took to go from the knot to making that whole bow it's so much because so you know you, you get a piece of ribbon you want to do something like that or if you want to do it on like a product it starts adding up really fast and it's this really long long piece to cut out if you're making it so i know i need quite a bit to make that knot and I'm hoping that with when the knot's in there, it'll just be fixed. I won't probably have to take it out and do it again all the time. The reason I'm not doing like like uh, overall clasps is that I just think they'll be too heavy for this fabric. And I really don't want to change the look. There are bib patterns out there that I could have gotten that look more like overalls, you know, like dungarees. Um, I didn't need to do this one but I like this company it's a popular pattern so I figured there's some people out there that want to sew it I'm just trying to make it fit me I'm not five eight I'm very curvy I just really hope the knot doesn't fall where this seam is right here. Hoping it's just past it. And I'll probably shorten that uh, side, that end down there to make sure that that is the case because um, a knot on, with the seam in it, just it'll look funny. It won't lay very nicely, so. I think I may even figure out a better way to finish the side button opening or I will try them on and discover I don't need the side button opening and I will just take all that out and I'll show you guys when I do that. My new machine I it is too big. I used to always hang this up on my thread tree right there. And um, my new machine is too big for this hole. It's like, wait a minute, I want my money back. That's where I keep my loop turner. I've always kept it there. It's so weird not having it there now. I have my time turner and my loop turner. <laughs> All the turners. 
This is a really long thing to do with your loop turner. But let's see if we can do it. So I scr I'm scrunching it up, you can't really see. I'm scrunching it on this loop turner. Whew, it's really long though. Ooh, I wanna cut some of it off already. I'm gonna, I may have to. I don't think I can get it in my loop turner. Otherwise, okay, even if I do that, okay, I'm gonna cut off like this much. I'm gonna back stitch it. Don't worry, that's not my finished end, I promise. I just need to lessen the amount that I'm turning. One of the ways I could have done this was done this in pieces and at that seam where I seamed it together, I could have um, not seamed it together and then just left it open here and here, like on almost all the way to the end, turned it right side out and then seamed that and then finished it. Um, with just a little bit of hand sewing. That's another way I could have done this to be able to fit it on the loop turner if you do need this entire strap. Okay, so pray to the loop turner gods. I don't lose it in there. I want to get a good hold on it. I firmly, firmly believe in the sewing goddess. <laughs> it's a thing. I don't know about you guys, but like years ago, I would have something like, say my needle would come unthreaded over and over, even though I know I set it up right, or my bobbin would run out, or something weird would happen over and over, like three times in a row on the exact same thing I'm doing. And then I would realize something's, something's wrong. Like I'm about to do something really wrong and someone's trying to tell me something. And almost always that was the case. And so... I call that the sewing fairy and she's looking out for me. This is a long way to go. I really don't want the end to come unhooked, which is like down here somewhere right now. If you're going to do this with a really open weave um, fabric, so I'm holding this loop. I'm pulling it through. You don't want to get too much at the end right here because then it will not move like this. Sorry, I keep pulling off camera. It's camera. It's really long though. Ah, see, I lost it, but I'm almost there. It's right here. That's where my end is. And I just need to get that down to here and then I can pull without the loop turner. So I'm hooking it back on there without catching the outside. And um, since I have so much in here, I'm gonna slide some of it like this real gently, then get that out of there and just hold it like this. And then I continue to pull from this end like that. And it's, I thought this was my, uh, someone, the person who introduced me to this called it a bodkin. It is not a bodkin. So for years I called it a bodkin. In fact, you know where I learned that? It was in college, at fashion school. They called this a bodkin, and um, it's not. I don't know if I misheard it and they were talking about all kinds of tools or what, but I'm pretty sure, because we all called it a bodkin. They gave me one in college for doing spaghetti straps because it was a little, they were still teaching us those kind of like classic things. I'm trying to get over the seam. There we go, I got it. I can pull really hard once the loop turner is out of there. That would take forever with your safety pin, by the way. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> there you go. Okay. One down. That length works, so we'll just cut that amount off. Over it. Now I, I really, I could finish it right now. Like if you were sewing this at home and you weren't doing all the modifications I'm doing, you would sew across the end and then clip your corners and turn it. But um, I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna shorten it even further. So there's no reason for me to. I'm 
This is a really long tie because it's meant to tie, go over your shoulder to the back and allow for crossing if you want, and then tie, like cinch the back shorter. And you can make it even longer if you wanted the tie to come to the front, like the view I'm doing, they have it coming to the front. I like that look. It doesn't tend to look good on me, but I love that look. I, I uh, do like the drawstring coming to the front on something. Okay, so I want to make sure I get that good in there and that little hook. Got to back it off a little bit here and get it going. Like that. This definitely takes a knack, but once you get the knack and you get the feel of it, you want to feel that fabric kind of sliding over the fabric in there and you just want to do a little bit at a time. If you do, if you pull here and you get it too bunched up down there, it just won't move. It just gets hung up. So you just do little bits like this. And I'm just holding it like this. See? This one's going a little easier. But I'm getting to the seam now. Eek, I lost it. You always want it bungees like this when you lose it, but I'm almost there already. See, and the, see the hook has like a little moving thing. So you just need to get that fabric seated at the base of the hook and then close it like that. That's how it works. So I'm just gonna pull this like that and now I can wrench on it a little better, pulling at the other end. And see, like, that's what I mean when it gets hung up. If it gets just a little bit too much, it will not slide. Oh, and I'm on that seam. That's what's going on. So I just need to get past the seam. There we go. Like that. It's like magic. I don't buy a lot of gadgets and gizmos, but the few I have, I really love. Okay, that's it. Okay, you guys. So today we assembled our back pants. We're putting these little side uh, button facings on because we want it to have a side buttons. I added a little lace trim to the back pockets and I created my bib and my front and I put the D rings on because this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come to the front like this and I'm just going to tie it in a knot. Maybe I'll get better D rings. It's kind of a huge deering. <laughs> oh, I'm just making do with what I got here. But it could be kind of cute. And so there's my pockets. And I was facing there too. You can see all that. Black denim. Well, that was fun, you guys. I want to keep going, but I know I need to fit these and make sure we're on track before I'm making these for someone else and I'll be disappointed. So, all right, guys, I really appreciate you coming by. Um, make sure you go to the chickenbootsusa.com website and click the sewing stream tab and sign up for the newsletter because I'm sending a recap of my um, stream schedule, like what I've made recently, um, links to videos, and then what I'll be making in the future there. It's only every other week, it's quick, and um, it'll be kind of useful so that you don't always have to be on Instagram. I'm posting on Instagram a lot more on this account than the Chicken Boots account, and um, I don't know why that is, sorry. This is a lot easier for me to come up with content for. Um, but all of our fall fabrics are almost done. Um, they're almost every photo for all of the items in fall fabrics are on the website except one right now. And um, those will be launched soon enough. And that's what I'm working on when I'm not here. Um, let me know if there's, and, and the other thing about that is checking out the tab on the Chicken Boots site is that you can send me an email from there and let me know anything you want to see sewn. Um, if you like the video, I would appreciate it because that helps. And uh, you can comment on the videos. You can do whatever you want with those. Um, you build your library. Just don't forget to create a YouTube channel so you can comment in the stream. And I hope that this is useful to you, even though I'm like modding on the fly here. Um, you can kind of see my process. So, all right. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I hope it's turning into fall where you are. And I hope you're nowhere near that hurricane. And, um, Take care. Happy sewing. Don't forget to use your blinker when you're driving. That's my tip. <laughs> Bye, guys.